Good morning, everybody. Hiya. We're looking forward to this. We've heard you are too. Uh, we've been thinking to do something like this for a long time, and it's really great that the Royal Voluntary Service were able to um, help us put this on today. Um, this is Ella. So Hi, guys. Tell us about your sewing um, life. My sewing life. <laughs> my mum's a really good sewer, and then in lockdown, I went home from uni, and she taught me how to sew. And ever since I've been sewing, like every week, I love it. Yeah. And now I'm at the arc and I sew, teach people how to sew. It's fun, it's actually, isn't it? I forget yeah. how short your sewing yeah. journey is. Exactly. Um, we're going for um, British Sewing Bee 2022. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, you've got uni to finish this you year. Need to finish. And then uh, we'll get you on that for sure. I love that as part yeah. of my little business. And then my sewing story is that I can't remember ever not sewing. Um, actually, I did a I did a scrunchie party yesterday, yeah. and my friend I posted some pictures on social media, and then my friend who now lives in Australia messaged going, "Who would have guessed after having a scrunchie stall when you were eleven in nineteen ninety, you're now teaching it like so thirty two years later?" So I've just given away my age, um, but um, I was like, "Did and I was messaging her, did we sew those when we were eleven? She thinks we did That's on really sewing cool. machine." Yeah. So um, my mum also is a sewer, and that's also quite funny about when we tell you things. Is we break some rules, don't we? Yeah. But then we both say, well, this is what my mum does. And our mum seems to do the same thing. I feel like our mums yeah. get on. I would trust it. Yes. Because they're, they're so nice them. Yes. So, yeah, so that's our intro. And then um, we both also use slightly different machines. So we're just going to go through both types of machines. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of the kind of, I'll show you properly in a second, like the, the bottom loader, the one that's, you know, on the front, the kind of silver metal loader machines. I just seem to have always had those in my life. Yeah, I've always had the top loader machines. If you can see that, I'll show you properly later. Yeah. So it goes in, the bobbin just drops on the top. And that's it, the main difference, though. Everything is, else is pretty similar. Yeah. And the reason, you know, like we're doing a session where we include both bobbins is, you know, we do begin at sewing classes and that's the one thing that people say, yeah. I don't understand the bobbin and hopefully we'll be able to tell you our top tips for not having that stress. They will cause you problems, mm. uh, but there's about two or three main problems that come up with them. And generally, once you fix those, you're off, you're yeah. fine. Or oh, let's turn the comments on. Don't forget oh, that you yeah. have to do it. Thought we were sat here talking to ourselves. Look, oh. hey, everyone's here. Oh, Hi, cool. guys. Yay, oh, I'm very jealous. Um, hi, hi everyone, that's good to know. Um, oh, I don't know. So we'll, um, we'll um, go through everything um, as slowly as we can, but we now we've got the questions on, I forgot about that bit. Um, then we'll be able to answer any questions, we'll keep an eye on them. And if we miss your question, we'll go back to it later as well and go, go through it. Right, I'm gonna do this machine first. So I'm just gonna tilt the camera a minute so you've got a better view of it, uh, maybe even a bit more. Here we go. This is my um, genome. I think it's called like the 217. It was about £100. And um, I recently asked my um, guy who does my servicing um, what machine he would recommend for people. And he did say um, a genome, even though he's, he's, oh, sorry, he's singer trained. He said that genomes are currently his favourite sewing machine. You can pick them up in lots of different places. Um, and actually, John Lewis, their machines are also um, the genome machine inside, and they've put fancy kind of different colours on the outside. So let's go through some of the buttons and stuff. Let's get it as big as possible for you. Here we go. All right. So the basics of a machine is that you've got a thread that runs across the top. I won't do everything in reverse. <laughs> the, um, the thing, the thread that goes along the top and then a thread that comes from the bottom, okay? And those two meet, and then um, stitching happens. They have to, you know, you have to have both there for them to connect here. You don't have to um, do the um, push or pull your fabric. That's one really big thing that beginners often um, get a little bit wrong. Um, everything that you do power-wise is done with your presser foot, okay? So you pressing your foot will alter the space obviously you don't have it on the, the table you have it on the floor um, and then the thing especially for kids I always say maybe even this might be useful mm. is it must go this way like you don't have it this way so your foot is on excuse me on the back there your foot should be here and your heel should be on the floor and that is actually quite important in being able to control the speed and generally when I teach kids I'm constantly looking at their feet and making sure that their heels are on the floor otherwise it's quite hard to control and um, the speed that you go at when you're doing maintenance, you need to put your uh, presser foot away from you um, or you need to turn your machine off and you've got like an on-off 
here at the back but it's obviously quite useful to have it on because you've got a light that comes with it and um, you've got here I just can get out the logo um, a couple of different places that you can place your thread to be honest I'm not entirely sure why you've got more than one I just use one of them um, and then I'm going to use like a nice bright red thread so you can see what I'm doing here okay so let me just find the end of it there you go so there generally is always printed um or kind of embossed um like little arrows on the on the surface of your machine here okay i don't know if you can just about see mine um i would also recommend you know there's if you just type into youtube your machine type and like threading up someone will have made like a short video explaining exactly how to do your specific machine or obviously read the book but on, on the whole they're almost identical all machines and in fact before i thread it up i'll quickly make a bobbin up. okay so this little silver thing here is used for bobbin and there'll always be something on your machine that's slightly different it needs to be something that gives it a little bit of tension and then this one i slide it through the middle what's your one my one yeah. It looks the same. You can they all have markings so you can just follow it. So they they pretty much identical, aren't they? Yes, they are. And then similar. my bobbin bit is in the logo. Let's move her along. There's a bit in the bobbin and then mm. it just moves like that. Yes. I noticed this with a lot of machines is that they're dotted lines for yeah. bobbins and oh, solid I didn't lines. Know that. Yeah, there you go. Go. and solid lines. It's yeah. often good to look for the difference. Mine actually doesn't have a picture. No. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead with this now. So I'm gonna so I've got my tension through that dial here. All the painters and decorators are here. Hiya. Hi, Jen. Um, and then I'll go make them a cup of tea in a minute. And then um I just need to attach it when you've got a bobbin. We have a jar of them. I would highly recommend getting hold of a bunch of bobbins. It's the most frustrating thing when you're in the zone and sewing um, and you have to stop to fill a bobbin. So at the start of a project, it's quite good to have a lot or have a lot of white and black ones ready to go. So I need to wrap it around here. A lot of people use this like a little hole in the surface. Um, but I actually find that a little bit frustrating. And again, that's one thing our mums yeah. don't do, isn't it? So we both laugh about the fact that we don't use the holes. We just wrap it around like so. Okay. And then my other top tip, let me just check if it's ready. Or oh, first before I need to put it into bobbin mode. It's currently in sewing mode. So I need to flip it over to the right so that it's connected and it's going to do the bobbin. I've added this little arrow here to remind me which way the bobbin thread needs to go around because I always forget. And then this little thing here is the bobbin, like the size of the bobbin that will make it stop when it hits that. So potentially you may have to adjust that a little. Um, you can do that with a screwdriver um, and you can just make sure that the bobbin is kind of filling it almost to the edge um, to make sure you get nice full bobbins. So here we go. So I'll give some, oh, my top tip, I forgot to tell you that, so it's funny we do it from this angle, um, is that I put my finger underneath that thread because the one problem that you can have with bobbins is that they um, start filling underneath the bobbin so I always right at the beginning just for a second I put my finger underneath the thread and then hopefully there we go it's straight on I can remove my finger I do that as well actually yeah Ella does that as well both of my mum probably all right so I just film my bobbin to see where I'm going background you right Greg? <laughs> I'll put it a bit smaller so you can see what happens when it stops. So you can go as fast as you want, it's quite a bit fun. I would say try and do the same speed the whole time. So, oh yes, uh, listen to yeah, I don't know because actually I'm being noisy. To, 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 um if you put if you're filling up to it, which it should be, it'd be fine. It's just a machine. Uh, put your foot down for the whole time because it can affect the way the tension is mm, on the bobbin. Actually, yeah. So your bottom stitch might look a little off. Say if you've gone really slow to start loading your bobbin yeah. and then speed up, okay. your tension will be slightly different. And if you want something really neat where your back stitching is showing, it might show. Yes. So I, that's foot down the same me, pressure actually. the whole way. Yes. Yeah. So back into sewing mode, release the bobbin. And then I don't use scissors very often. I just use the slicer. And most mm -hmm. machines have some sort of mechanism, which is quite discreet, 
there's one here where that one is a push down. And I always describe that as kind of like using dental floss. You've got to have your hand to either side and you've got to whip it through the, the tiny blade that's enclosed in that. And then you'll be ready to go. Right, I feel like you're a little bit further away. Yeah. But it feels funny not having a yeah. face at all, isn't it? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, well, everything's in reverse as well. I always find that a bit tricky. Right, let's get the top thread done. That's hopefully the easiest and the one that most of you will be able to understand. So there's all these mechanisms all the way down and you've always just got to connect with them. So you've always got to make sure your thread goes inside. All machines have some sort of channel that you go down and that you go back up. And then this is often the one that people find a little bit tricky because you, this thing in here needs to be visible. So you need to be rotating your um, hand dial oops, sorry, here, okay, until that pops up. Now, the thing that I would say about um, the hand dial is that you should always be doing it. I'm trying to remember which way now, because I'm in reverse. So it's towards you, isn't it? I can do it. Yeah. Oh, it's, yes. So you should never do it in reverse. You should always, and just even if it means that you've got to do it quite a lot extra um, because the needle's already up and you've got to go all the way down and then go up again, just always get in the habit of putting it in forward rather than, than backwards going in reverse because that can mess up when you're sewing later. So when you get to this little thing here, you can see that there's a little arrow telling me that I go from the right over to the left. So I must go over there you keep the thread quite high because it must fall inside the little the little eye of that that uh, connector here a lot of problems we see when kids especially are using the sewing machines and when we check to see what's what's gone wrong is that they aren't inside that hole there they've done it too fast and therefore it hasn't actually gone inside and that's such an important part because this is going up and down all the time controlling the tension and here um, and you'll have it in, in different places on your machine, is the tension dial. I rarely touch that. Do you touch your tension dial often? Mm, unless I'm doing really thin, stretchy fabric. Otherwise, yes. don't go near it. No, really. yeah, really it's... avoid that. Like, it should come perfect. And then if you're doing a bit of maintenance, you might change it a tiny bit. But really, that's that. there generally is another problem is wrong with your machine. Tension should be your last. What's yours on? Four. Yeah, so is mine. Yeah, it doesn't be quite a common one. Four, four, three and a half. So I've had. Well, if you have any questions, I'll just thread my machine whilst uh, whilst you uh, have a little look. Oh, if you've got any questions. Um, I have a sewing machine and need to turn up some trousers. Well, hopefully you can do that now. That'd be good. I have three machines. Oh, one's a genome. Yeah, let's go for it. You can watch this back later. Yeah. Yes, you can watch it back later. I think it's a link. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. available for hours on this, uh, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, they, I did one extra thing there whilst uh, Ella was doing that. There's actually something here that looks like a kind of hook, and I always call it like a bra strap. There's kind of like a tiny little, there'll be something that means that from this point of contact here to the needle, there's some way of making sure that you've got like a nice smooth journey. So try and identify there'll be something in this area that you can hook your work to. And again, I always describe everything as doing things like dental floss. So you've got to kind of hold it and mm. sneak it into the hole. So I've got this little clasp here. So I had to make sure it was in there. And now obviously I'm going to thread my needle now. So I want as much visibility as possible. So I'm going to, ra I've raised my needle so it's as high as it can go. I'm also going to lower my presser foot and I've got a lovely clear space then to thread my needle. It's one additional thing that you may, if you find it quite hard to thread a needle, it's quite frustrating if you um, have to do it kind of like this all the time. And there are little gadgets. Have you got a gadget? I've never a used a gadget. No, no. But there is one, isn't it? You've got a needle threader. Where? Yeah, that's a needle oh. threader. <laughs> I've never used it. Yeah. But yeah, if you find it quite hard to um, do, to thread your needles, there are little gadgets that yeah. you can have, um, which are you know, often machines are about 20 mm. pounds more. Yeah, you put it inside that. And I, I find it really hard mm. to use. But I think, again, it's like threading a needle. You get used to it. And then your final step, I always get people to start like this, is your, your um, presser feet look like um, skis and you're just going to slide the thread inside the skis and leave the thread behind. I find that another good way of just making sure that you're not going to unthread any time soon. So that's the threading up of the machines. Um, here you go, bottom ones are tiny. 
Um, so tension for Sandra there. Yeah, so she's got big top stitches and little, little small little you stitches. We'll do the bobbin now. There's a few mm. things I think that could be. I have, I'll show you a couple of things with Sandra. I would say it's more likely to be stitch length. Than yeah, that does seem a bit weird, doesn't it? But then again, it might be the tension when you show the bobbin case or something. It, it sounds yes. like it could be. That thing Basically, of... any problem you have with your machine is probably bobbin related. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so we'll just go through those. We'll go through that. Hopefully, we'll be able to show you. So I've just taken off this, hopefully you know how to do that. And then I've opened my little door here. And the, my bobbin case here is this little area here. Mm -hmm. You very rarely have to touch these two black um, attachments here. They release all the metal work. And that's going to be when you're doing a bit of maintenance on your machine. You're looking for like a little lever in the center. I'll show you on the screen now. And you just pull that device out. It's quite, I think it's, it's on an angle. It's left the bobbin behind. Normally, they come out together. All right. So that's the little thing there. And it's just that little lever there to remove it. Okay. So nice and easy. Shall I show you mine to compare? Oh, yes. It's yeah. yours now. So this is the top loader. That's the best thing. It actually will never get that angle. Of what yes, it is, I know. But um, it's just underneath your press of it. And instead of coming out like that, you'd actually never need to touch that. There you go. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. So this doesn't come off when you do a top loader. It's literally just this. So usually there's a button on the side, one's there, and you just press it. This plastic comes off, keep it safe. And then it literally just pops out like that. So it doesn't have a bobbin case. Yeah. That is the difference. It doesn't come in anything. I don't know why I don't like them. They are quite good, aren't they? I prefer them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's you. And you can get a machine like this. You can carry on and put yeah. your bobbin on if you want. I'll have a little yeah, break. No worries, yeah, no worries. But Watch I'm in a position. Case. So the bobbin, I've already got one loaded. So pretend you're good to say um, I always got taught to leave a little bit out, obviously. This is probably a bit too long, but I've got it now. And the best thing to do is make a P mm -hmm. shape. So when you put it into your machine, this is the top of your P. That's the, so that's you're looking at it like a P, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good to know, yeah. I don't know this, yeah. Yeah, and then that goes in. And you don't need to like do anything special. You literally just drop it in. And then, like the top of your machine, your top load has got marking. So here, I've got this arrow, and it tells me. And again, there's like dental floss. I'm going to keep that quite tense. And then it goes round. So you've got quite a long journey. You've got to go. It's got a long journey. It's got to go. Can't do it from the same. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, some of them just come out there, don't they? I've not seen yeah. this where it's a whole long journey yeah. like that. And then that bit there, it's got a blade on, and then it will cut the thing oh, off. That's really clever. So that keeps it tense in, which is what the bottom load is doing yes. in a different sense. Yeah. And that's all you need to do for now. And I'm going to put it back on. I've been I've been converted. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. It's yeah, so it's good. good. And then I'll show you the next bit. I've just got to put some top thread in. Oh, right, I'll, go back, I'll go back to yeah. mine, right? So a bottom one. This is, like I said, a very quite a common machine that a lot of people have got. So hopefully this will be helpful. So you're going to pop your thread that you've just filled inside there, and then there's a little groove. There's only one groove in the side, and you need to make sure you slide your thread closer into that groove there, and then you just need to follow it the the side here until you get to this kind of little oval shape. And the really important thing, if everyone's quiet, you'll all be able to hear that noise there where it clicks into that space. It's so important, I'll do it one more time, but it makes that little noise and then you know that it's fully in there and it's not gonna fall out straight away. So I'm just going around and finding the one slot and then I'm pulling it towards that kind of little oval shape there and I'm waiting until I hear that clicking noise and I can see that it's in that, and that's my bobbin loaded. Now, the trick my mum always tells me is that if she ever comes and checks my machines when I'm having trouble mm. with them, she loves this, is that she, oh, this is actually a good example, if that's actually not good, all right, where you actually haven't got a free-flowing bobbin, okay? So it, what should be happening, it should be dropping like a kind of a nice, even speed. If it just falls, whoop, then it's not good either, all right? So what I need to do to fix that problem is that little screw by there, I need to get a small screwdriver and I need to either loosen it or make it a little bit tighter, okay? So in this case, I need to make it a little bit looser so that my thread will just, when I hold it there, drops nicely. I'm just gonna turn, I just got to turn my email notifications off. I'm just gonna do that, sorry, a bit of personal admin. Um, one second. Oh. And then, 
the nail. Tea Sorry. Break. Yes, get mm -hmm. yourself a cup of tea. Cool. Thanks for that. Take that nice. So there you go. All right. So I should now be able to, shame I haven't got a screwdriver with me, but I should be able to drop that. So just with a little bit of adjustment to that little screw by there. That's a really important part. So I'm back into my little oval Oop, there. And now I'm going to pop it in the machine. There's only one way it goes because there's this little arm, it's like a little hole there. And then this has got an arm. So I'm just going to place that inside, rotate it around. And I must hear that click. It must be connected into the space there. And I know that that's done. And now I need to bring the top thread up to meet the other thread. But you're going to like hold the machine. Yeah, like back at like a little bit of an angle. Cool. And then what I'm going to do is going to go try and figure out which way the thread. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be rotating my hand dial. Let me go over a bit. So I'm just using my hand dial over here. You see my hand? All right. And I'm just going to be turning that several times until the bottom thread meets the top thread. Such a shame. It's going to be hard to see, isn't it? But basically, it's going to go, and I just got to give. I'm just giving the top thread a little bit of attention until da, 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 it catches the bottom thread. Makes a nice loop. There you go. I can see it. Cool. Yeah. So I just kept pulling on that top thread, and then my bottom thread has come up to meet it. And you'll need something like a pin or a pair of scissors. <laughs> Everything in reverse is very weird to find it and bring it up to the top there okay. so I'm just going to grab those Oops. and it's the same it's exactly the same when you get to this stage it's the same with your top loader so I can break it touch it yeah go for angle. it Let's see what we can do here I haven't got a light on the machine because oh yeah we didn't want to I don't really bulb. know why yes you haven't got a service, service. <laughs> and didn't know still no bulb um, I'm just going to pull it pulling the dial towards me oh yeah, that's funny. there it is oh it is there Yes. Yeah. Oh, so you still have to do that bit. Still have to do that bit. It's just putting it in that's different. Yeah. That's going to happen. Cool, actually. Yeah. Of course it Yeah. And then these two threads need to be at least kind of 10 centimetres long, okay? So don't ever start with a tiny little tails because as soon as your needle starts moving, they're just going to disappear and you're going to end up with nothing yeah. and you're going to be all frustrated. So make sure you do keep these at a decent length. This is why in the sewing area we don't have scissors because we encourage everyone to use the slicer because then you're forced to have like a 10 centimeter tail you can't mm. accidentally cut it by there so it's quite a good quite a good idea not to have scissors in your sewing area to control yourself <laughs> um i'm gonna close that door. so those are the main big things really it's just making sure just, my face is on for a minute i'm sure people might miss us um is making we'll do some more sewing now but um make the bobbin thing is making sure that you um th those two things is that those little noises isn't it yeah and just that consistency so changing your bobbin quite often when you're learning to sew and just getting used to it mm -hmm. um so let's let's do some sewing so i'm going to close everything up we're, we're off again just say bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so close everything up so that's my little door closed and then that's my little attachment. I sometimes you don't need that if you're doing narrow stuff. You you end up needing the kind of the smaller desk. But the majority of the time, it's more comfortable with it with them both mm -hmm. on. Going to get some bright yellow fabric. Mm -hmm. Going to have to fabric. Oh, so it's on the floor actually. Ah, oh, here we go. I got it. Cool. And I'm going to do some upside down sewing. All right. Nice. So yes. So there's a little lever behind, and that is so essential to mm -hmm. your sewing journey, all right? This, you must put your presser foot down. If you feel underneath the presser foot, it's like serrated. And when you sew, that serrated edge is moving, and that is pulling the fabric along. If you don't connect your fabric with your presser foot, then you're not going to be sewing anytime soon. It's just going to be jumping around on the surface. And then simply, I'm just going to put my foot down. I'm off on a little journey. <laughs> All right, so really simple to sew um, straight. Obviously, these dials control all of that. Um, mine has got kind of a little guide here, which has got the different stitch numbers. So I just choose um, like a small, like a, sorry, yeah, like A for me, which is a, a straight stitch. And then I've got the different sizes. You'll notice we have them quite big, like two to three, don't we? Especially because mm. we do a lot of kids sewing. And then that's quite handy. If they make a mistake, it's quite easy to unpick them. And that's quite good for the majority of simple products, isn't yeah. it? So you don't really need to, you know, have anything smaller or bigger than that, really. 
So let's do two new corners, shall we? Yeah, shall I yeah, do well. you, 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 Yeah, go on then. Ella, Ella can do two new corners. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, you're in. Turning corners fun. Yeah. I like it. I've lost my glasses. I'm going to get a better angle. You see your okay. bit there, yeah. Doing some... That's all right. Let me know if you can't see. Cool. Press the foot down. I say to everyone, this is my favourite sound, like in the sewing room, yeah. is that sound of the press foot going down. Yeah, make it sound yeah. like it's a good thing and then they, they want to do it as well, don't they? Yeah. Turn the needle in. So turning a corner, I'm going to start by just sewing a straight line. So you might be doing this on a bag, a little pillow, and then I get to the end and I could obviously put the needle up, cut the thread and start again, but then you'll just be sewing for hours and you don't need to do that. So what you can do is, let me just put it up, is you can take your needle, and this moves your needle, so you can push it into the fabric whilst you're still sewing, with the fabric clamped down by the press of it. And if I turn that and put the needle in the fabric, then I'm more secure, and then I can lift the press of it up, and now I can go anywhere I want. I can literally do whatever I want, but I'm gonna do a square. So I'll show you back here. So if your press of it comes up, then you're free, but if your needle's down, if your needle's up and you forget to do that, then you probably won't get a corner, will you? You don't get a sharp corner, you're no, going to be a bit yes, wobbly. Yes. So as long as you make sure you're using this to put your needle down into yeah, the fabric, so important. towards yeah. you, so we don't lose our thread. And then I'm going to do my favourite sound. And that's literally it. And now, obviously, the fabric is going to go this way. I'm making a nice L shape. And there we go, I've got a nice sharp corner. It's probably the best way to do it. Quite satisfying too. I'm going to do the same thing. So, putting the needle into the fabric using this bit, lifting the press of oh, it's not down. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> lifting the press of it, and now do you want to show like a sharp curve as well? Do you do, you, do, you do yeah. that exactly the same sort of way? So, if you're doing a curve shape, sometimes you can yeah. get in a bit of a predicament where you're like you you can't turn it fast mm. enough. So, we'll just pretend you're doing like a kind of semicircle now, and you lose track so then you put your needle in basically. I'm confused now. What's yes. Your, what, what so do you draw, draw like, I'll, I'll draw something for yeah. you. There we go. Something like that's so a hard corner. So I would then put the needle in at some point to kind of help me turn that corner. Oh, okay. hard to do yeah. it. You know, like a, so I've done her like a quite a difficult like semicircle. Yeah. So I can't lift it up. We'll see, you'll see my stitches. So just go? Yeah, yeah, go for it. So it's just, this is quite useful. If you're sewing away, it's very sound your machine, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Um, so and you're finding it quite that. hard to turn the curve that you're doing, mm -hmm. is I do exactly the same technique as yeah. turning a corner as every now and then. I just shift it a tiny bit mm -hmm. to kind of help me turn yeah. that corner. So not make it into like an octagon, just literally turning it a couple of millimetres so that you can kind of follow the line. So yeah, your needle in the fabric is your best friend for stuff like this. Mm. There you go, I'm just doing that. I haven't followed Gemma's lines. Yeah, actually. yes, yeah. The pressure's got to me. <laughs> and now, yeah, when I got to here, I'd probably do the same. Yes, so just it's quite useful, isn't it? It's not yeah. just the like corner corner no. so face. Because you can always, obviously, when you get a bit more confident, you just hold the fabric to go around corners. Yes. I think the tendency is then you pull your fabric a bit too hard. And um, we've had a question. I've seen there's in a moment we'll go back because Jean looks like she's asked a question. So we'll go we'll go back and see if we can find her original question. Yeah, no worries. Her original question. The looping underneath the fabric, Janet, is a hundred percent your bobbin. You're mm. gonna need to figure out like it probably isn't your tension. Like we constantly get problems with um, you know, you finish a little bit of sewing, uh, especially if the kids are um threading up their machines themselves, and then you look underneath and there's those big loops mm. underneath, and every time we, we put the bobbin in and then it's totally fine, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's just something that you're probably doing with the bobbin that you need to try and fix. So just trying mm. to follow. I know it's a bit random because we've got two different machines, but hopefully even like reminding you that YouTube is is a very good resource oh, where yeah. you can literally type in Genome 217 threading up and the, hopefully made, yeah. the manufacturer might have made a video, but if yeah. not, some lovely person will have made a short video and you'll then figure mm. out the bobbin and then you'll, you'll get it. But yeah, whenever, like, isn't it like 99% of the time when we have problems here? Oh, just, yeah. We just rethread the just bobbin, the bobbin and all, all is okay again. Mm. So it's just taking it slowly and getting used to your machine would be my top tip. Mm. But yeah, whilst I just say some other things, we just scan back and see if you can find what Jean, yeah, um, what Jean um, wants to say. I'm just going to talk about needles whilst Ella has a little look at those. Um, 
so needles okay so underneath here i'll just release my work oh yeah we haven't actually talked about releasing your work so when you finish your needle always needs to be up that's also something people get a bit stressed about um because they their work is trapped but you just always you use your hand dial quite a lot you need to get quite confident with using that and not relying on the pressure of your foot and um, then you pull away your threads and you should only have two and then you slice it now we have a machine don't we that constantly mm. has four I don't really yeah, know why. I don't know why. Um, so we, but what you'll find it's it's just an extra bit of thread, and it's a three connected to four. If that makes sense. So you mm. just literally, you just got to identify which one is the rogue one, and you pull it out, and then there's this extra bit of thread. But that would again, we go on about this quite a lot with the kids. Is that you should only ever have two pieces mm. of thread. If you've ever got one, three, four, any other number other than two, then don't start sewing. Yeah. Only start sewing with two. Top Make sure bottom. that top one is through the ski foot. Make sure the second one is kind of flipped back behind and then you're ready and that they're at least 10 centimetres and then you are ready to sew. So needle changing. Here, you've got like a little black dial and you just turn it and that just loosens the needle holder. The needle has kind of only one way of entry because it's like a semicircle with one flat edge. And um, you get different size needles and, you know, when you're learning, you may, want, or if you find it hard to thread, you might want a slightly bigger general purpose needle. But then there is also like leather needles and silk needles yeah. and all sorts. So, um, and then you yeah. literally just put it back in. It only goes in one way. And then you tighten it with the dial. Make sure it's like fully in. So a little bit like putting in a drill bit or something like that. Let's forget, how do you take the, is there a, how do you get the presser foot off? Yeah. Mine just seems yeah. to just come off every now and then. And I never um, it's the back on, on mine. Oh, I got back. it. Yes. Then, yeah. yeah. We got it. We got it. So there's like a little lever at the back. So I just pushed mm. that and my presser foot fell off. And then just to put it back on, I just place it back underneath where it should sit. And then it's got like a little groove in it. And I just match that up. And then I just lower it down so that it sits on top of it. And then it's working again. Oh, good to on. know to change that because sometimes you have different press foots. Yes. So Next, I don't know when we're doing this actually, but we're doing zippers. And mm, we're we put a zipper foot on. Yeah, something like the twenty eight. Like something we're going to do zippers. So we're yeah. trying to be a better angle. Actually, it's been a bit yeah. not showing our heads, is not it? Yeah. Well, anyway, but uh, hopefully you've been able to get a bit out of it. And then the final thing I wanted to tell you about, we will find those questions in a second, so we'll stay mm -hmm. on for a while and go through those. So do keep asking. We're happy to stay on and keep telling you things. Is uh, maintenance of your machine. What's your mm -hmm. top tip? Got one in there. Oh yeah, this is yes. it. Yeah, we can. I'd say I I don't want to encourage people to put your machine oh. back in the box because that just seems wrong. Oh, yeah, as soon as it goes in the box, out. that's yeah. game over. It's too daunting. But if you can find yourself or make yourself, this one was earlier, nice sewing machine cover. I'll yeah. put it on actually. Why not? Mm -hmm. Um, it just stops it. Your machine is going to get dusty and it's going to have stuff in. That's just the nature of it. But whilst you're not using it. It does it's make a little a dust actually. cover. I, I it know. really does. Yeah. We've got some, they're not on actually. I know. But we have I some. Use, I machines. used them yesterday with some yeah. kids and I have them back on. I'm in trouble. And then someone looked after you. I could see her giving me dirty looks when she walked in. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, this just, I think it looks nice too. And it just, if you've got people running around, you don't want your sewing machine. Yeah, no, I do agree. I think but, it is worth having yeah. a cover on. It and, just stops you doing more cleaning of the machine, I reckon. And it looks nice. Yeah, and if you can find a corner of your house where it's set up all the time, you will be much more likely to go and go to your machine, whip it yeah. off, and then, you know, fix those trousers or um, sort out that project. If it, As soon as, like you said, as soon as it goes back in the box, it's yeah, game over, it's isn't it? Thing, but... And then the only other bit of maintenance that we do, really, we try and keep them clean. Um, and like I said, we do we do get them serviced every now and then. Um, but we um, we clean out this section, especially if we like, remember those bags we made and they were so fluffy oh, yeah. that material. We kind of regretted that because this got filthy. Um, but you need to make sure you use some sort of like gentle vacuum. You shouldn't ever blow the dust, mm. which again, I'm always quite surprised. People, yeah, people are always quite like, don't think of that because obviously you see all dirt by there and you just want to get and rid of it. it but but uh, yeah, and wipe it. But you really want to extract it. So you want to have it removed and you don't want that dust to go inside the engine of the machine. So yeah, just a vacuum cleaner and just pull it out of the machine rather than blowing it in. That's the only kind of maintenance we do from day to day, yeah, isn't it? Like so pretty easy machines to mm, live with. They're a bit <laughs> like computers, you just gotta get over the yeah. fear of yeah. what they what could go wrong and just give them a whirl because there is very little that would go wrong. 
Right, so did we find um, any questions? I can find Jean's questions, so have you? Yeah, yeah you if you had or... a question, Jean, I just saw that bit, but maybe it's the above answering Janet. Yeah, it doesn't matter which look. way the thread is going around the bobbin. Oh, I'll answer that. Yes. It doesn't matter which way the thread is going around the bobbin when you put bobbin in the holder. Um, it, when you've loaded the bobbin, it will be a certain way. The machine's only going to put it on going yes. the direction it tells you because it's never going to spin it backwards. Yes, so yes, that, that bit, yes. It yes, does. it matters, but you can't I do don't, it wrong. I don't think it does for the bottom. No. But, but I was quite interested when you just said about doing it as a P, and I yeah. thought maybe I am missing something, so I probably would suggest you double check with your machine, because I'm now mm. going to go and Google that myself, because I'm not entirely sure. I've never, I've never worried, I just throw it in, and yeah. it works every time, so I guess that means that it doesn't matter. Well, there's not an up or downside to a bobbin. No. So... Really, it probably doesn't matter that I just got taught to put it as a P, but I think that's more so that you have ten right. centimeters left. Right. Okay. Um, that's right. Yeah, rather than putting it in. With okay. Spare. Yeah. Have a little look. Yeah, I can't see. I can't see Jean's question from earlier. So hopefully yeah, they'll ask again, and we'll go, we'll go on Facebook in a minute and have a little check. Yeah. So yeah, any any more questions before we set off? I can't think. It seems like. Like I said, it's just it's just that bobbin line. Like you said, you can watch that bit over and over again, but it's yeah. just all about those funny little noises and mm -hmm. then just making sure the, the click when you put it inside. And then if you have any problems then with your stitch, just, I know it sounds silly, but just do it again. I yeah. always, whenever I'm called over to um, a, a machine that's playing up, because mm -hmm. I've got so fast at throwing a threading a machine, I just, I find it easier just to re-thread it just and to just, out. yeah, just whip that yeah. off, whip that off quickly put them back in and then it's fine like I find if I just do the top thread or just do the bottom thread yeah. I end up going back to that machine two yeah. minutes later um so it's in that but you know I, I know that sounds like a lot when it's maybe taking you like five minutes to um thread a machine but actually yeah. it'll then become four minutes and then it'll become exactly. three minutes and, and five then... minutes of threading it will save about half an hour of sewing frustration yes Perhaps. yes so it's worth it so um, that would be my top tip sadly is just just start again just do it again yeah. <laughs> So yeah, cool. Um, okay. Last time I used machine, I found I couldn't stop the pedal. Oh, there's something that that that, that, that means it's like you need to WD forty your pedal, I guess. What? So yeah. it just like if it's it's obviously getting locked into the position. Yeah. So you can buy new pedals. It might maybe your pedal is faulty. Um, because I don't know that I don't know how you would really take it apart. But it, it does sound like there's something wrong where it's not, you know, you might, the hinge yeah. here, I suppose, you could put a little bit of WD-40, but it just means that it's not, um, it's, you're just stitching non-stop. So yeah, that's not, that's not ideal. You definitely need to have the, the control over this. Um, On the top of do you only use the brand? No, you, yeah. you're a big fan of Hemline, aren't you? Yeah, I've only ever used Hemline needles. I think they're pretty good for anything you need. That's, these are quite good for anything. Yeah, you know, if I'm doing heavy. thin fabric, I'll get the hemline jersey, mm. and they are just sharper, pointier, skinnier needles. I think. Yes. But um, no, you don't need to match them. No, I, you? I'm definitely. I don't not, even think brother makes I'm, needles. I'm not a brand really. person. These are random bobbins, mm. ran, random everything. Oh, I've, I've, we, we do like to go on about. We highly recommend one some sort of way of holding your pins, whether it be a magnet mm. or a bracelet or a pin cushion. But the longer your pins, the better, yeah. isn't it? It's so much easier with a long pin. And then also, obviously, a good quality pair of sewing scissors. Mm -hmm. Those two things will do you well, won't they? Yeah, and some nice thread. You don't need the most expensive thread, but I do find, if you're finding that your thread keeps snapping, mm, you're, yeah. just buy Gusserman thread, it's the best one. Yes, like, it is. It's in a, like, if you go to a nice haberdashery, it'll be there. It's like £1.35. Yeah, I think if you're just doing it occasional sewing, it's definitely yeah, worth it's treating worth yourself it. to like a little like box of four. Yeah, that'll do yeah, you for nice. years. Yeah, it? yeah. Um, yeah, I've got this one at the top. Um, the top of the machine. There are two spindles for holding the thread. Why yeah, well, the two different ones. No, I yeah. don't know. I, I assume it's because I could be threaded and I could do a bobbin at the same time. Oh yeah. Yeah, so right. I could I could have one ready mm -hmm. to sew. I wouldn't have to and and connect that and I could also have a bobbin on the go I don't see that there's any other reason for having no two. I don't have to oh there you go but yes yeah 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 as on mine it's just there so I could only have it yeah and you've got this little stopper and that's, that's yeah. really useful isn't it I like that yeah yeah that means it doesn't um move around um switch so oh yeah yeah I switched to so I'm nervous about my pedal 
My mum has that feature in her machine, actually, so she can use the pedal or just press the button. Oh, uh, yeah. I see what you mean. Okay. And at the top. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Like, yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, if it, if it works. You can put your feet up. Yeah. Cool. I think that's that's it. That seems to be all the questions for now. But like I said, we've got quite a nice day today, haven't we? So yeah. we'll, we'll pop on later. Oh, metal. Oh, this is a good one, actually. Mm -hmm. I meant to ask the technician this, the other day, the yeah. engineer, because I, again, because I buy packs of 100 and they're, like, really cheap. I go plastic, but my mum is quite disappointed in me. Is she? Yes. I only have, my mum only uses plastic. Oh, does well. she? My mum only uses metal. There you go. So, so. <laughs> See what you fancy, Shelley, I reckon. Yes. Yeah. There's no, we don't have an answer to that. No. I think they're both same same and again yeah you might see which one you prefer mm. but yeah i'm a plastic we're all three of us plastic but my mum's yeah. now so yeah i don't know if that helps sorry um yeah that's great and i'm enjoying the questions yeah same yeah so do get I'm sewing and if you get practicing in the next couple of weeks we'll be back in like i think it's like the 28th or um mm -hmm. i'm sure someone will add in a minute when we're back on but um, yeah. we're doing a zip session and we actually haven't Decided what we're going to make really yet, have we? No, we'll so anyone wants anything. Yes, yeah, put in <laughs> yeah. any suggestions, but we're just going to go through some different and invisible zips and the kind of like your regular zips, and mm -hmm. then maybe a couple of ideas for things that you can make. But that yeah. would be hopefully another fear conquered. And again, as always, do add any comments of any projects you'd like to see us make because we're always looking for new ideas. Yeah. Um, two seconds, there's a couple more questions that come in. I have the uh, twin needle. Oh, I have to in the second one is a twin needle. You have to use both needles. You, no, I can't imagine. So you can only use one on the other. Yeah, if you could get away with just one. Um, it, fab, yes, here we go. Universal, regular fabric, about 80, 80 and 90. To 100, 80 I'd to 100, say. yes, is the, the size. Then, yes, I think it's a similar question. If on, do you need different size needles for different projects? No, if you're sewing with cotton and something a bit thick, like mm, kind of average that, yeah. beginner's fabric, then you just yeah. need an average. You'll be fine. Just buy a standard pack. If you go onto like stretchy or something really, really thin, I'd go and get, even if it's not jersey, I'd get a jersey needle. Or, they're called ballpoint needles, actually. Yeah, okay. okay. They're nice and sharp. Are they? Yeah. yeah. You can get them. They're the same. Pack. Yeah, I just buy the heavy assortment yeah. just because of, like I've mm. mentioned many times, because we teach kids and it's, yeah. it's a, it throws everything off if uh, one of the machines, the needles breaks and yeah, you're sure. running around. So they, they, they do exactly those needles in a regular type mm. as well. The only thing, if you were sewing with really thin, obviously a big needle mm. like that, like punctures the fabric. Oh yeah. That's so why you have a tiny one. Yes. But for us, we're just large, making like... just need normal. I just get yourself some normal. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's yeah. nice. Yes, Double row of stitching. Ooh. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. You can get that threaded up. But yeah, if you find it hard to thread both needles, I, I imagine you can use it as one, which yeah. is also um, which is also great for you know your typical everyday projects. Yeah. Cool. Right. I've got to get going. Oh, I've lost my dog. I was going to show you my dog. <laughs> I like to show my dog on every video, but she's disappeared. So I'll uh, do that next time. No worries. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, and like you. I said, we'll check the questions later and. Also, we love it if you, you know, add any comments in a week's time when something we've told you has been useful or if you've yeah. made something cool. We love seeing pictures of it, so do add those. Um, maybe, okay, so a suggestion for baby stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Ella's our girl. She's she's yeah. a much better sewer than me now after a year. I've had, like, 30 years and I'm st still on basic stuff. <laughs> I don't so. need to do a lot, though. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so we'll get Ella yeah. to have a look at that. Yeah, Great. All right, guys, we're going to have a, get on with our day, but uh, lovely to seeing you all and speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.